We begin in the name of Allah, the most merciful, most beneficial. I would like to express my gratitude for uh, to Al Mustafa International <coughs> University, and especially to Brother Shuja, for inviting me here to be with you for uh, the next three days. I would like to also slightly request that we slightly change and modify the schedule that uh, Brother just has mentioned in order to facilitate the task that I have in mind for ourselves for these three days, uh, which is in my mind as follows. Uh, we enter into a process of reflection in addition to the academic value of this session, we benefited from we benefit from our gathering to, together here in a spiritual way. Uh, this I say because uh, where I stand now, in my own position, where I, my own place, uh, I have no value left for pure, dry, academic stuff anymore. I've done enough of that in my life. And uh, I see it very dangerous for the spiritual path that we all have. Therefore, I would very sincerely request all of you to have your spirits open in addition to the minds for these sessions. Uh, because time is really very short, and each breath that we breathe each, every single breath that comes out of us decreases the time that we have left. Therefore, every second of our life, every moment of our life is essential uh, for the task that we have and some of which I will talk uh, in a moment. But before I do that, I would like to get to know you uh, before we begin. And therefore, starting from my right, if you could just tell me your name the country or the place from where you come and the religion you follow. So, Bismillah, starting with you. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I'm Nuri Hamamoto. Uh, I'm from Japan and I'm Muslim. Thank you very much. My name is Axel Takac. I'm American and I'm Catholic. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. My name is Hussein Oriental from Indonesia, Muslim. Hello, I'm Joseph. I'm from France. I'm Christian. Sergei Kozin, and the empty chair is for my wife, Anastasia. We're from Russia, Eastern Orthodox. Assalamualaikum. I'm Rebecca, and I'm Muslim from UK. Uh, I'm Rebecca from the United States. Um, I sort of Christian background, but I don't follow religion. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Yuki Uenosono from Japan. I'm Buddhist. Assalamu alaikum. I'm uh, Zubaida Yusuf from Indonesia, Muslim. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, but uh, I came from Japan. Uh, <clears throat> I'm, my background is a Buddhist. And my, my name is Kenji Tomita. <clears throat> Assalamu alaikum. My name is Sami. Um, I'm coming from London and I'm Muslim. Uh, my name is Mehboob. Uh, I'm from Pakistan, Muslim. Sorry, I'm also from Pakistan, just so... <laughs> but, but other side, there we are. <laughs> um, let's then begin by, uh, by a broad outline of uh, what we hope to do during the next three days. Uh, today and tomorrow, 
we want to understand various aspects and dimensions of uh, the spiritual crisis. Uh, I would mention in a while what I mean by uh, spiritual crisis, but uh, this is the general outline of the, of the three days. I also want to say that uh, in a gathering like this where uh, we have this wonderful collection of uh, people from various countries and different beliefs, uh, it is absolutely essential that uh, we respect each other's beliefs even though uh, there is no effort to, to convert or change. We do have a fundamental common ground as well by virtue of all of us being human beings. And uh, as human beings, no matter what we are practicing and no matter what we believe, uh, there is a fundamental common denominator here and that's where I'm going to start. Uh, there are differences in the way we perceive the world, the way we believe, the way we practice our beliefs. Uh, but they are secondary to the fundamental common bond that we all have as human beings. Uh, and at that level, all of us can share an, an understanding of the spiritual aspect of our lives. When we say that uh, this session is about the spiritual crisis of the modern man, we begin by defining what we mean by the spiritual crisis. Spiritual pertaining to the spirit. However, we are told in the Quran, وَيَسَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْرُوحُ قُلِ الْرُوحُ مِنْ عَمْرِ رَبِّي وَمَا أُوْتِتُمْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا That they ask you about the ruh, which is translated as spirit. Uh, the spirit is from the Amr, the command of my Lord, and you have been given knowledge but a little. The substance we call Ruh, the spirit, from which we drive the adjective spiritual, uh, about which we are saying that we are in a crisis. So we want to go right to the bottom of the definitions to understand what is meant by spiritual, what is meant by crisis, and what is meant by the modern man. These three are fundamental categories in, uh, for our discussions, and unless we are clear on what they are, we wouldn't be able to go further. The spirit itself, then, is something about which we don't have a knowledge, and spirit should not be confused with soul. Uh, in the modern Western philosophical discourse, we normally have uh, equivalence between spirit and soul. So soul-body relationship is mentioned. But the spirit itself, which is ruh in Arabic, uh, and also in Hebrew, uh, it's, it's a similar word, ruh. Uh, there, there is, there, this is a substance. Uh, this is an... This is an entity by itself about which we have been given but little knowledge. However, when we say spiritual, we are not simply talking about the entity called Ruh or the spirit. We are talking about a certain understanding of our being which transcends the body, which transcends the physical embodiment of the spirit. This certain understanding of the spiritual is actually grounded and rooted and, and connected with the creator. Whether we believe in the creator or not is a secondary question here. I'm talking about essential human constitution. So in that respect, and, and I'll have uh, more to say uh, later in a about this, but in that respect, the spiritual dimension that we are talking about has to do with the inherent relationship 
between the creator and the created. Now, if somebody does not believe in the creator, and of course people have the freedom not to believe in the creator, as many people do today, uh, even then there is, and I will I'll get deeper into that, even then there is the dimension of our existence that opens up to the divine, to the creator, to the, to the aspect that we call the spiritual aspect of our being, in addition to the physical aspect of our being, the bodies which walk and talk and, and eat, as uh, some of the disbelievers uh, said to the Prophet of Islam, uh, what kind of prophet are you? You walk and you talk and you eat. And the response, the divine response to that was that uh, we did not make any prophets who did not talk and walk and uh, walked in the bazaars. Uh, we are human. And as a fundamental condition of our being human, we have a body and we have a spirit. The recognition of that spiritual aspect is the secondary, at the secondary level. If the sun is out there and we say there is no sun, that does not deny the existence of the sun. The sun is there. If somebody is blind and cannot see the sun, that does not mean that the sun does not exist. That just means that the person is unable to perceive the existence of the sun. So in our uh, relationship, with the divine, with the, with, the, with the creator. We have a choice even to deny the existence of the creator. And out of seven billion people who are now living, human beings who are now living on earth, uh, there are many who have chosen to say, no, there is no such thing as God. There are many. Does that mean that there is no God at all? No, it's just like the sun being there and somebody saying there is no sun. They are not able to perceive or recognize the existence of a creator. Those who do recognize, we call them people who have a religion. And there are different religions in the world. But there is the relationship between what, however we perceive the creator their relationship in its essential aspects remains the same. That is, this is a relationship between the creator and the created. How we perceive the creator in different religious traditions might differ. How we establish that relationship may also differ. But those differences are at secondary level. In the Islamic tradition, we perceive the creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's his, his, Jalala, his, his personal name, we perceive him through his attributes at one level of his existence. And we establish relationship uh, on the basis of the shahada that Muslims pronounce, Ashadu la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad rasulullah. And unlike what, uh, what Dr. Jalali said yesterday, uh, about the, the day before yesterday, uh, about the 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 holy texts, whether it's Bible or the Quran, um, or other revealed text, emphasizing the tawheed, the oneness, and not really uh, debating about the existence of God itself. The existence of the Creator is taken for granted, uh, he said, that, and most of the texts, they normally try to establish the oneness, tawheed, of the Creator. In the Quran, we do have verses mentioning uh, the existence of God himself and arguing from the created order of the universe who sends the rain, who created the sun and the moon, and they will say Allah. So in addition to the, uh, to the, to the Tawheed, which is oneness, and I'll go deeper into that in a while, uh, the existence of God himself was also questioned not only in our times, but even before. Uh, these people who called uh, themselves the Dehryun, uh, people who said there is just the Dehar, that is the time. Uh, nothing exists but the time, and only through time we change and things happen through time, only through the mo movement of the time. 
So uh, there is uh, there is a fundamental aspect of uh, human freedom involved in either accepting the existence of creator or denying it. Now we can divide human beings uh, in different ways, in many different ways. We can say that some people, some human beings are men and some human beings are women. And we can say among the men some people are, have beards and some people don't have beards. Some people um, are uh, American and some people are Canadian. We can, we can have many different kinds of definitions of who, who uh, human beings are. But according to uh, one definition, and that, is, that gets us to the bottom of the definitions, fundamental, the most important <coughs> definition, and it comes from the Prophet Islam, he said that al-Nas with Nan, people are of two kinds, Saeedun wa Shaqeeun. Now, uh, those who, who are Saeed and those who are Shaqee, uh, which, means, which means that those who are destined to go to paradise and those who, who are destined to go to the other side, which means he is dividing humanity, he is dividing human beings on the basis of their ultimate final place of resting. We also have a hadith uh, of the Prophet Islam, Inna Allaha Azza wa Jal kad wakkala bir rahmi malaka fa yakudu ayyu rabbi nutfa ayyu rabbi alaka ayyu rabbi mudga fa idha rad Allahu an yaqdi'a khalqan qala qala al malak ayyu rabbi zakaran aw unsa shaqiyun aw sa'id these are the these are the fundamental primary categories through which we human beings, you and me, we have all come into this world uh, through this process of birth that happens in the mother, mother's womb. And when the, mother's in, when the child comes into this world, every child has a destiny, has a qadr attached to that person. Although there is human freedom, but this is from the foreknowledge of the creator himself. And that also divides humanity into shaqiyun or saidun, the two categories, the two primary categories of those who who, who, who are destined to one side or the other side. Now, in law, we talked yesterday also, the day before yesterday, about the questions of fiqh. But in, in law, um, and this operates at all levels of law, even. Uh, down to the traffic laws. If you are caught doing something against the law and you say to the judge that, oh, I didn't know about this law, that ignorance of the law <coughs> is not allowed, is not recognized as a valid reason for breaking the law. Even at the very mundane level, we are driving on a highway where the speed limit is 100 kilometers and we are driving at 200 kilometers and the police man comes and stops us and say, oh, you know, the speed limit is 100, you are driving at 200. You cannot say that I didn't know the speed limit was 100. It is presumed that the person who is driving the car already knows the law. Likewise for murder and theft and all the other laws that exist. Now, if this is true for the secular so-called worldly laws, what about the divine law? Can we, as human beings, proclaim on the day which, according to Islamic belief, Christian beliefs, uh, Jewish belief, uh, is the day of judgment? Can we stand and say, oh, sorry, actually, I did not know that you exist. <clears throat> Would we be able to do that? Would we be able to deny the spiritual reality of our being at that time? The ignorance of the law is not a valid reason. Furthermore, there is another aspect of this. Now, according to, according to the Quran, and we believe, Muslims believe, that the Quran is the actual word of God, Kalimatullah, uh, the actual speech, uh, 
وَإِذَا أَخَذَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمَ مِنْ ظُهُورِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ وَأَشْهَدَهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ قَالُوا بَلَىٰ شَاهِدْنَا All of us, you, me, the child who's going to, born, to be born today, all of us established a covenant with the Creator who asked us, أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ Am I not your Lord? And we all supposedly said, Bala, you are. And the Quran further says that, أَن تَكُولُ يَوْمَ الْكِيَامَةِ إِنَّ كُنَّ عَنْ هَذَا غَافِلِينَ We, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we did this so that on the day of Qiyamah, you would not be able to say that we were ignorant of this reality. Now, if you find a person uh, who is... Uh, Who, who truly believes that there is no God, who really believes, who is a true, pure, well thought of atheist, who says, well, I don't really know if God exists or not, or I don't believe that there is any God. There was a biological process, I came into this world, and I'm here. I have no idea what are you talking about. I never signed any document with God saying, well, you are my creator. It's true, it's possible. Right? Now, the answer is, it is true that uh, you don't have any conscious recollection. When this spiritual event took place, before the birth of any human being, in the spiritual realm, there was a time when every single child, man or woman, who was going to come to this earth, Establish this mifaq, this covenant. Allah to be Rabbi Kumbala. Am I not your Rabb? Am I not your Creator? Yes, you are. But we don't have the consciousness of that. That is taken into condition, into into account in the human condition with which we are born today. That means that when we come to this world, there must be some external evidence for us to trace back and say, yes, I feel within my being that I do have another dimension of existence that opens up to the spiritual aspect of my being where I do recognize the Creator. There must be something out there that tells us, that can lead us. Now, th the process through which this happens is the con conscious choice that human beings are able to make. Ya Allah. Uh, it's frozen for some reason. It's frozen for some reason. Okay, inshallah. We, I'll, I'll restart this while, while I still talk. That's okay. Um, I said can I do something? No, no, it's okay. Uh, so, uh, that external process, let's continue without uh, having this technology disturb us. Uh, that external process through which we recognize the Creator uh, is from the world in which we live. But in order to have that kind of external process operative in our beings, we need to have some faculties, some things which given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by the Creator, in order to recognize. So we have five external faculties through which we gather data. Correspondingly, we have internal faculties as well through which we process that data. Now you're all sitting here and you have the eyes to look at. The eyes which see, they are like a camera, but the images which these lenses are seeing, they are going inside, they are going inside uh, where they are being processed. When they are processed, then you are able to, and I am able to recognize that this thing is a light bulb, and this is a wall, and this is a door, and this is a human being. We perceive things through the external faculties, and we process them through the internal faculties. That much is clear. 
Now, when we see the world, when we see what's around us, we see a created order. And a lot of verses in the Quran, and as well as uh, in the Bible, they point to external realities for which no presupposition is required. Nobody has to believe in the Creator to see that there is a sun that shows up every morning without a break. There is a moon, there are stars, there are seasons, there, is, there, is, there are winds, there is rain. There is a process in the nature that testifies to the existence of Creator. And this is a very old, very old and tiring argument in the academic discourse about proving the existence of the Creator from the created order. You all know this, right? Right from Aristotle down the road. We have in philosophical circles uh, this argument for, for, the, for the existence of the Creator from the created order. And religious texts also, they point to the presence of the Creator. So the Quran talks about three different categories, three different ways uh, through which human beings are able to recognize the existence of Creator. Sanurihim uh, ayatina fil afaki wa fi anfosihim fil afak and fi anfosihim, which means um, in the distant horizon, literally speaking, but in the in the world outside the human being. And the second is inside the human being. Our attention in this um, series of uh, lectures is on inside the human being, on the very aspect of our own beings. Now, as human beings, we are able to feel emotions, whether I'm not even uh, talking whether or not somebody believes in the Creator or not. But each human being has something called intellect. Very important key word, uh, intellect, uh, which uh, is unfortunately which has been devalued uh, in, the, in the contemporary world. Um, intellect something to do with akal which is one of the internal resources given to every human being and to differentiate intellect and akal um, from rational processing, reason the intellect is different from reason We are going to be back on the screen, inshallah, to the place where we were. I think uh, Mahbu had uh, mentioned this hadith uh, yesterday, the day before yesterday, about uh, every single child being born on fitra. Um, and then the parents making him or her into uh, into somebody of a specific religion. But the the, the section of the hadith that is relevant to what I am saying is the fitra. Fitra is the imprint, the divine imprint upon which we are born. So the mithaq, the alas to be the covenant that we all signed and established with the Creator, is not an external reality. It is imprinted on our beings. And every one of us has within us that document which says that, yes, there is a Creator. With the choice, as a human condition, that we can deny the existence of the Creator. That's why.